qualitative research and quantitative research. Nalilito pa rin ba kayo sa pagkakaiba ng dalawang to? Or are you still finding it hard to choose which appropriate research approach should be applied on your research topic? Don't worry, in today's video, I will be providing you the differences between these two research approaches and more examples of quantitative and qualitative research. So, ano pang inihintayin nyo? Let's discuss and let's talk about this over a cup of coffee. So, tara, samahan nyo ako. In this lesson, we will first differentiate quantitative from qualitative research and provide examples of research in the area of interest. Quantitative research versus qualitative research. Bago ka magsimula ng research mo, it is always important to identify the appropriate research approach that you should use on your research topic. So we have two research approaches. We call them quantitative research and qualitative research. So sa mga baguhan and for those beginners in research, so they tend to be confused on how to differentiate the two from each other. And they are having a hard time kung ika-quantitative ba nila or ika-qualitative nila yung research nila. In our discussion today, I will just give you three keywords to remember in order to distinguish two of them from each other. So let's start with quantitative. So sa quantitative, these are the Three keywords that I want you to remember. First is measure. Second is numerical data. Third, statistics. So, when we say quantitative research, we tend to measure variables. So if we use statistics to analyze numerical data. So, sa quantitative research, dumadaan siya ng statistical procedures or statistical process. Since numerical data siya and all the data are expressed in numbers, so definitely we will use statistics in order to analyze them. So, ano yung mga numerical data na to? So, these numerical data are, we have the average, we have frequency, we have the rating scale, and we also have uh, cause and effect or we test hypothesis and causal relationships between the variables. On the other hand, when we say qualitative research, it's the exact opposite of a quantitative research. So here are the three key terms that I want you to remember when thinking of qualitative research. We have the words, understand, non-numerical data, and generate. So, isa-isahin natin. So, when we say um, understand, so in qualitative research, instead of measuring variables, we tend to understand data. So, ano yung mga data na yun? We call them the non-numerical data. So, the non-numerical data are the opinions, the concepts, and the experiences we obtain from our respondents. So we try to, instead of measuring them, we try to understand them. And also, after understanding and analyzing these experiences, opinions, and these concepts, we generate theories or we generate our conclusions from those experiences. So let us now talk about the number of respondents that we tend to have when we are conducting quantitative and qualitative research. So, so quantitative research, since it's, it involves numerical data and we have statistical procedures to analyze our data, we can have a large or a wider population. So usually, pinaka, alam ko, pinaka maliit na uh, population for a quantitative research I-50. Pataas. So, pwede siyang maging 100, 200, 300 by means of just distributing questionnaires or conducting survey questionnaires to your respondents. And then, once after consolidating them, you can easily have the statistical analysis uh, doon sa mga quantitative data or sa numerical data na nakuha mo. At anong uri ng mga questions yung laman ng isang quantitative research? So, of course, your instrument should contain yung tinatawag nating objective or close-ended questions. So, pag sinabi nating close-ended, respondents are limited to uh, choices that they could select and that they could choose from. 
So, it's either yes or no lang, or there are multiple choices, A, B, C, D, or pwedeng mag-agree, or slightly agree, disagree. Kaya siya naging close-ended kasi we are not allowing our respondents to reason out or to explain their answers by choosing which answer or which option best applies to them doon sa particular question na yun. Si qualitative research naman, as opposed to quantitative research, kaya nga nang sabi ko, magkaiba silang dalawa, no? Nagpo-focus naman siya sa mas konting population. Actually, ang pinaka-konting uh, respondent ng isang qualitative research, or pinakamarami rather, ay 20 respondents. Dahil, anong uri ng questions yung tinatanong natin? Or anong uri ng data yung kinukuha natin sa ating respondents? Since we are getting their opinions, experiences regarding a particular phenomenon. So, naka-express sa words yung ating data. So, meaning, maaring mapahaba yung sagot ni respondent, maaring maikli. So, usually, this is done through interviews. So, syempre, mahirap mag-interview ng 100 plus na respondent. So, paano mo yun i-analyze? We have a much smaller population compared to a quantitative research. We tend to have 15 to 20 respondents. Minsan nga, isa lang sa case study. Pero it really depends on the type of qualitative research you would want to have. But the highest number of uh, respondent in a qualitative research is nasa 20 na. Kasi nga, yung type of questions that we have there, instead of close-ended gaya ng quantitative, we have the open-ended. So when we say open-ended, bukas sa ating respondent. So, hindi natin sila papipiliin kung yes or no, kung A, B, C, D, kundi we will ask them how and why questions for them to reason out and explain their side. So, definitely, mahaba-habang recording yan, mahaba-habang sulatin yan. Kaya, we only have few respondents. So, let us explore some research examples of quantitative and qualitative research approach. Example of a quantitative research. You survey 300 students at your university and ask them questions such as, on a scale from 1 to 5, how satisfied are you with your professors? So, you can perform statistical analysis on the data and draw conclusions such as, on average, students rated their professors 4.4. So as you can see, this is definitely and undoubtedly a quantitative research since, first, we have 300 students. So meaning, we have a larger, a larger amount or number of respondents. Second, on a scale from 1 to 5. So this is measurable. It's like asking your respondent um, 5 being the highest and 1 as the lowest. So you try to instead of asking them their opinions of their professors, you tend to ask them of the way they would rate their professors in numbers. So on a scale of 1 to 5. So they judge through numbers, through a scale and on how they are satisfied with their professors. Now, how are you going to analyze this? So you can for perform statistical analysis on the data and draw conclusions such as on average students rated their professors 4.4. So meaning the results you obtained or the final results you obtained, let's say among 300 students. So on the scale of one, to 5 being the highest, so their rate is 4.4, okay? So, you have more respondents, you have um, an analysis or a question transcribed on a scale basis, and then you analyze it through statistical analysis, and then the results you obtain is, of course, the numerical results. Now, this time, let us now find out how different qualitative research is. I have an example for you. So, you conduct in-depth interviews with 15 students and ask them open-ended questions such as, How satisfied are you with your studies? What is the most positive aspect of your study program? And what can be done to improve the study program? So, in this case, uh, we have here in-depth interviews of 15 students. So you will notice that 
if quantitative has 300 amount of respondents in qualitative research we only have 15 students which is very few because you will conduct in-depth interviews one by one from these respondents and then you will ask them open-ended questions or questions that will enable them to give their opinions or their thoughts on a particular matter like for example what is the most positive aspect of your study program so you don't have choices here that would let them choose a certain answer but they would think or they would think according to what they feel and what they think so that's why it's open-ended now based on the answer you get you can ask follow-up questions to clarify things this is something you cannot do in quantitative research since you are conducting in-depth interviews you can ask follow-up questions to clarify things now after after gathering all the qualitative data you transcribe all interviews using transcription software so there is also like a software that you can use in order to analyze your qualitative data so we call it like this if we have statistics software in quantitative we have transcription software in qualitative and here we try to find commonalities and patterns so based on all of their answers you will now find the common answers the common themes the patterns they have so now let's explore more examples usually the terms we use in quantitative research are the words relationship levels effects so we have levels and relationship because we look at the level or the intensity so we express intensity through numbers and then relationship by means of comparing and contrasting data uh, data and we have the effects because it undergoes uh, observation and experimentation so we have the relationship between children's nutrition and cognitive development so in children's nutrition you can look into their height and weight or their body mass index which is also expressed in numerical data and their cognitive de development which uh, could be seen into let's say their cognitive abilities expressed in numbers or probably also their uh, grades or performance in school now the second one we have the qualitative research i have here lived experiences of patients diagnosed with anxiety disorders so i would also like to point out if we have the words level and relationship in quantitative in qualitative we have the words implications perceptions factors lived experiences so this time you are trying to explore on how patients with anxiety disorders live their lives what are their lived experiences every day you involve more on exploring a certain problem so ayan alam niyo na yung pagkakaiba ng qualitative at ng quantitative i have here five items na pwede ninyong sagutan so you can pause this video you can grab yourself a pen and a paper and then you try to answer and to determine whether the following research topics are quantitative or qualitative. Ayan, very good. So, sana next time, uh, hindi na kayo malilito sa pagkakaiba ng quantitative at qualitative research. Um, thank you for staying with me and for listening to our lesson video today. So, I hope to see you again on our next video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button as well. And then also turn the notification on para updated ka sa mga videos natin, especially dito sa ating Practical Research 1 series. So, hanggang sa muli at Thank you so much again. This is Mom Kat. Have a great day. Bye.